see the knife moving around in front of my eye. Price for eye is. Uh, you are able to see really without wearing my glasses. Hi, Hi guys. guys, I'm Sirong and I'm a third year medical student. I'm Zihan, I'm a third year medical student as well. So now, we, we are, are going, going to answer all the questions you are curious about laser. Let's What do you think about laser? That's what we Is it good? Is it bad? Wait, wait, wait. Why don't we just ask the expert? Let's do it. So I heard of different kind of laser like LASIK, SMALL and ICL. So what are the differences between them? Okay, in order to correct your eye power, there are actually various types of procedure you can do uh, to prevent wearing the spectacles or wearing the contact lenses. Mm -hmm. So the commonly in the market now is using the laser to treat your eye power. And there are a few different types of laser, for example LASIK, LASIK, or small and apart from laser therapy we also can use a implantable type of contact lens to correct your higher eye power is there a differences between the three different types of laser like the LASIK and the small yes actually there are um, differences mild differences in between these three types of uh, laser treatment and uh, the commonly ones that they used to do will be the LASIK all right so LASIK surgery, before that, um, they use a small little uh, knife to create a superior surface uh, flap of the cornea. After that, they use a laser to further treat your eye power. Then after that, they cover the flap again, right? With the advanced technology, currently they are using the femtoan second laser uh, in the incorporate with the LASIK therapy. They create the flap, the anterior surface of the opening by using the femtosecond laser. After that, then they will do the laser therapy to treat your eye power and cover it again. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, LASIK currently. And SMALL is another type of the laser procedure, more advanced type. They do not have the anterior opening um, like LASIK. Mm -hmm. They will create a small little uh, tiny opening and after they have done the laser treatment, they pull out the in the middle the tissue, all right. And by using this procedure, it can further uh, reduce your eye power and correct in without spectacles. So, in conclusion, due to the advanced technology, we no need to use any knife or any instrument. Oh, we do use instrument in small, but we do not use any knife and blades. On to cut off the cornea already. Now they are moving on to the bladeless type of uh, laser treatment. Even though in LASIK, they are using a femtosecond laser to create an anterior opening. And uh, for the SMALL, they only create a small little opening in order for you, for us, the doctor, to take out the uh, laser tissue. Wow, it's getting safer and safer. How about ICL? Right, so another type of the uh, eye power correction will be implantable contact lens ICL. Uh, this is more suitable for those who have a higher um, eye power and also their cornea thickness is relatively thin, right? So they will place a small tiny contact lens inside the eye, just behind your iris, but in front of your natural crystalline lens. And using this type of uh, contact lens implantable type, then uh, you are able to see it clearly without wearing as glasses <gasps> So it means that it is more invasive compared to the laser which is the LASIK and the small Yes, laser just a uh, treatment of the surface of your eye mm. but this type ICL is go inside your eye and implant the lens into your eye For ICL, like, is there like a time limit like, of the contact lens in our eyes or will it be permanent? It is a permanent type of implantation unless uh, later on you need to undergo the cataract surgery then they may want to take out the lens Okay, mm. I see It seems like there are different procedures like LASIK, 
small also ICL. Mm. So how do we know what is the best for us? Right. So different types of laser or the surgery is suitable for different types of patients. So now we need to know under the group of uh, laser therapy like LASIK and also the SMILE, the candidates ideally should be more than 21 years old when the vision is actually more stable, it will not uh, differ a lot. And the uh, eye power should not have changed much in the last uh, one to two years. And your cornea should not be very thin and should be healthy and do not have any infection. And another thing is you do not have any other uh, underlying eye problem, for example, glaucoma or cataract or a very serious type of diabetes uncontrolled and you are not pregnant and also not a nursing woman that time, right? So if you also have very severe type of dry eye, it is um, advisable to treat your dry eye first before you go for the laser treatment, right? And also uh, for the ICL implantable contact lenses, there are few other um, more prominent type of indication to do the surgery. Let's say the patient having the uh, eye power very, very high um, and the cornea thickness is very thin, they are not suitable for laser therapy, then ICL is actually more suitable for them. And ICL able to treat the refractive area or the eye power up to 1,900 for the short sightedness and also up to 600 for the asthmatism. Uh, I see, so everything like the type, the thickness of the cornea and also like the power will be tested by the ophthalmologist before the surgery. So every candidate who desire to do this kind of uh, refractive surgery okay. need to have a comprehensive and very detailed eye examination by the eye doctor in their clinic so that to prevent any uh, operative surprise <laughs> after the treatment. Mm. If I am the patient, I actually concerned about like, is it painful and also like, can I see the knife moving around in front of my eyes? Because it is quite weird if I see like things moving when I just awake and see all the procedures going on in front of my eyes. Yeah, that's actually um, is a concern by most of the candidates, right? So after you are approved to go for this type of surgery, you are good enough to undergo this type of surgery. So what you need to do is, the doctor will lie you down on the bed comfortably and this procedure, no matter if it is laser surgery or it is an ICL um, procedure, is done under local anesthetic, which means you are still awake. So after you lie on the bed comfortably, then they will put a eye drop medication to numb your eye. So throughout the whole procedure, you will be more comfortable while they are doing the laser treatment and you will observe some object is moving uh, when the doctor is doing the surgery but don't worry the doctor will always calm you down and relax and focus on the uh, blinking light for the laser therapy whereas for the ICL implantation the doctor will also give a eye drop to numb your eye after that just proceed the surgery and it takes about um, 15 to 20 minutes for the whole procedure to be done so basically, all of the three procedures that you've mentioned is pretty much painless, am I right? Yeah, it is painless, but you may feel something is moving, right? So finally, the most important questions. I believe all of you guys are waiting for this. The price. May I know what is the price for each of the procedures? Right, so this is uh, actually most attractive type of question in this video. So I'd like to tell you all that this procedure, no matter it is LASIK, uh, it is MAL or it is ICL, all this procedure will not be done in a government hospital. So you need to go to the private eye doctor and approach them in order for this procedure to be done. And roughly, the price or cost for the procedure will be different from centers to centers so, but I can tell you the range of the procedure let's say for LASIK and it is a Fento type of LASIK uh, procedure the cost is will be priced range between 4,000 to 6,000 ringgit Malaysia right 
So, but if let's say the elastic procedure is done with the small little knife, then it is relatively cheaper and more economical, which is about two to three thousand per eye, right? And also for small procedure, the price will be slightly higher, which is six thousand to seven thousand ringgit Malaysia per eye, okay? And for the ICL, which is the implantable contact lens, the price per eye is. 8,000 to 10,000 Ringgit Malaysia mm. What? Please have to take note that it's only per eye So actually you have to double oh, the pricing no. To get the actual procedure surgery done But if you are uh, happy with those uh, contact lens free or glasses free type of uh, lifestyle You can go ahead with that mm. You have to have money first <laughs> <laughs> like what is the recovery phase after the surgery like how long is the period or can we rub our eyes or something so what exactly the precautions after the surgery right so for the small procedure is actually a small incision type of surgery so the recovery phase for this type of procedure is actually shorter compared with the other type of laser or the, the other type of procedure um, if let's say for LASIK or for the small procedure, normally they will issue you 3-4 days of medical certificate to let you to have a rest in the house and uh, for the ICL implantation, because we need to open up the inside the eye mm -hmm. so that we can implant the lens into the eye so uh, this kind of procedure is a rather a big type of surgery so the recovery phase may take longer, up to a month Whereas for laser or LASIK, takes few days and after this type of procedure, you need to take precaution like you need to prevent your eye from getting uh, the water into the eye avoid contact spots, avoid rubbing of the eyes for at least a month of period Sorry, I have a question mm. Can we sleep after the surgery? Uh, definitely For small or LASIK, it's actually a smaller or small type of our procedure most of the patients are able to see clearly after the procedure and they are able to sleep with a small discomfort it's actually not in a very severe pain and for the implantable type of contact lenses surgeon may provide you a type of um, eye shield to protect your eye so you need to wear it when you are sleeping to avoid your eye from pressing on your pillow Actually, I've heard uh, the questions like other people ask Is it okay to shower after the surgery? Because some of the people say they have to like wait for a few days Only can shower, so is it true or...? Showering is actually okay Provided that you need to avoid the water from splashing or entering your eye I think most of us are worried about the side effect of these procedures. Like, can you share about the side effects? Right. So, um, the commoner side effect that most of the patient encounter after the uh, procedure, for example, the laser procedure, are dry eyes, or they may experience halo or uh, glass around the lights, and also sensitive to the light. Mm -hmm. And there are some other more serious side effect for example if let's say in a LASIK procedure we need to create a flap on top of the eye um, and the flap may be fallen off what? so there is a flap dislodge uh, issue may occur uh, risk of infection risk of progression of the uh, eye power or the curvature of the eye may change after that and progressively uh, changing the power may be over correct or under correct Right, so this uh, problem may occur in a LASIK type of um, procedure Whereas for the small, the risk of the flap problem is none Because we didn't, we didn't create any flap for the small procedure There are a few side effects of the ICL that we need to take note One of the side effects that most of the people, some of the people may encounter Is the further drop of vision But this kind of side effects is quite low 
And other side effects are they may develop cataract or glaucoma later on in their life. And some rarer complications or side effects are the lens may get rotated and their astigmatism may change after the rotation of the lens and require second uh, surgery or retinal detachment or further uh, increase in their eye pressure and causing glaucoma later on. When other people ask me about does this procedure guarantee clear vision after the procedure or will not cause any blindness? Any procedure will not guarantee you to have 100% safety or 100% good vision after that. They carry certain amount of risk and also very low risk of blindness. So it's actually a relatively safe procedure, I guess. Yes, it is a safe procedure, but you need to bear in mind that every surgery carries its own risk. For example, if you uh, walk down the street, you may just trip and fell. I have a question that I have been wondering for some time. Um, since LASIK is relatively cheap and also safe, and I've been wondering why some of the doctors, especially eye doctors, why they don't go for LASIK? Right, and again, not everybody will be suitable to go for this type of procedure or surgery. Mm -hmm. So they need to consider their cornea thickness, whether they have very severe dry eye or other condition that may prohibit them from going for this type of procedure right and if let's say they want to go for the this type of um, cosmetic type of uh, procedure certain doctors or certain patients may think that if they wear glasses they're actually more handsome or, or more attractive with that so they choose not to go for laser or ICR implantation don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to your friends. And if you want to know more about eye problems, can go to my channel above. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye! Bye. And if you want to know more about eye problems, can go to my channel above. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> see you in the next video. Okay. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye! Bye! Bye!